So thank you very much for the invitation. It's a great honor and pleasure to be here. Um, and it is true, um, I'm going to talk to you about the tequila block, uh, which is actually the transmuscular quadratus lumborum TQL block, where, when, why, and how. And uh, so that's a bit of a, a big mouthful. Okay. And uh, some of you already heard me talk about this tequila block uh, extensively, so I have to say like Charlie Brown, oh no, not again. So I am sorry if some of you heard it before. I'm, I'm hoping that with the repetition, uh, continuous repetition from my part, you will all say, okay, we must listen to this small guy from Copenhagen and, and try out this block. Um, and I have nothing to disclose. And I come from Scandinavia, I come from Copenhagen, so I'm sorry about the accents. I did live in London for three and a half years, uh, 2000 to 2003, but that didn't help the accent, I'm afraid, but uh, I was trying. So just north of Copenhagen is uh, the castle of uh, Hamlet, uh, Kronborg. Uh, and um, this is uh, lying just facing the, the straits between Copenhagen and, and, and Sweden. And um, the British Navy in 1807, we thought the British was, were our friends, right? So they passed this castle and we were waving to the British Navy, hello, welcome to the Danish Straits. And they sailed into Copenhagen, as you can see here, that the friendly Copenhagen people, they were waving to the British Navy. And how did the British Navy answer? Well, they bombarded Copenhagen. <laughs> and uh, they ruined Copenhagen completely, just because we at the time were having a little bit of a discussion about joining Napoleon and saying, well, uh, our navy will go with you. And the British didn't like that at all. Uh, and to top it off, they defeated us completely and took our proud Danish Navy away. So that is a little more than 100 years ago. Now, uh, this guy, uh, he is actually, he was born as Prince Philip, was born as Prince of Denmark. So we are trying to build the good relationship again. When he was married to uh, Her Majesty the Queen, he, uh, he had to uh, drop that title. And, but we haven't left the the British or the Commonwealth uh, to, uh, entirely, because this lady is Crown Prince Mary, and she is, uh, she's from Tasmania, which is part of Australia and then part of Commonwealth. So we're trying to build relationship very hard. I come from this uh, great big new hospital, which is called Sealand University Hospital. It's the fifth uh, and newest hospital. It's so new, it's not even built yet. And I will, <laughs> I will not show you my, my present accommodation, because this looks so great. And, and, Look, it's built like a Viking uh, castle with, the, you know, water here, and we are inside here defending our rights. <laughs> right. What about the tequila block or the, all the variants of the quadratus lumborum block? And I know some of you have heard me say this before, so I'm sorry, but it, it is good with a bit of repetition. This block, the Blanco block, or Raffus block, like I just told uh, Nigel, was first presented in... 2007 at an El Sora meeting in, in Exeter. Uh, he described in, his, uh, in this sort of uh, way where to place the local anesthetic. Was it down here, was it up here, or was it where the arrow is? There was a bit, little bit of uh, discussion about that, and, 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 but many people, including myself, when we got wind of this Blanca Black, we started to use it. I have to say I had uh, not exactly the, the, the greatest effect in the, uh, of this block in the upper abdominal area, but certainly uh, in the lower abdominal area, particularly when we performed the block bilateral. Then uh, some clever people in, in, in John McDonald's and Brian O'Donnell's group, uh, here's the paper from 2011 by Carney, also uh, talked about this. This was in anesthesia. And they called this block again the not the, the, the quadratus lumborum block, but they call it the posterior approach. So these guys were trying to find out what is actually going on when you apply ultrasound to this area. Uh, so uh, in this paper, they were comparing the first tap block through the triangle of Petit with this sort of new Blanco block of posterior approach, uh, and then mapping the dermatomal anesthesia and, and, and uh, using MRI and, and contrast enhanced, contrast enhanced uh, um, uh, in, injectate, try to evaluate where did that injectate go. 
And they, they actually found out with this, the posterior approach, and with the McDonald's spline tap lock in Triangle Petite, that some of that local tracked into the thoracic pervertebral area. And uh, Blanco and, and John then uh, 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 de further developed. Now, look, the circle has come into the right spot now. Now they say that the QLB1, the first QL block, is supposed to be delivered here just deep to the uh, transversus abdominis fascia at the lateral border of the quadratus lumborum. Now, uh, from personal communication with, with Rafa, which I'm considered to be a very good friend of mine, uh, he now says, well, actually, this is not a QL block, it is actually the fascia transversalis plane block, first described by uh, Peter Heppert, the Australian Peter Heppert in 2009 in Canadian Journal of Anesthesia. Uh, so this is deep to the epineurosis from the trans, uh, transversus abdominis uh, muscle at the lateral border in this area, and I'll come back to this area in a little while, this area is the pararenal fat compartment. And what do you find in this isolated pararenal fat compartment. Well, you find the ilioinguinal, the iliohypogastric, and the subcostal nerve is tracking in this area. So when you actually perform the QLB1 block or the fascia transversalis plane block, these are the nerves you are blocking. Now, Rafa and John, they then uh, described the QLB2 block, and, and they said it was deep to the, deep to the uh, lat dorsi muscle, but posterior to the carotis lumborum muscle. Actually, probably into the uh, superficial part of the thoracolumbar fascia. And when you then ask uh, uh, Rafa, how do you think this block actually works? So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, but seeing is believing, and he has had very good results with this block, published as well. Uh, I think their theory now with the QLB2 block is that um, in the thoracolumbar fascia, there are many sympathetic nerve fibers, and if you inject local anesthetic into the fascia, you will sort of break that circuit and by then blocking some of the sympathetic fibers, you will provide good pain relief. And, and so that is their explanation. They do not believe anymore that this QLB2 block <coughs> tracks cephalate into the thoracic pervertible space. And this is uh, Rafa's very nice publication proving that his QLB2 block was very effective for post-arbitrary pain after elective c session. Then again, you get some of these pictures from, from, from Rafa. And I've, I wrote to him immediately saying, what, what is this? What, what, what's going on here? Because you have the erector spina muscle, sorry, the uh, external oblique, the internal oblique, and, and transversus abdominis. Then you have the big lat dorsi muscle here. And then the QL and the psoas muscle down here. And where's the needle going? You're asking, where the needle going? Well, here's the needle path. Here's the needle path, but it, this is in the, in the fascia layer between uh, external oblique and internal oblique, and nowhere near this area. So I, I'm still struggling, and I don't know how many, show of hands, how many of you have any uh, good experience with the QLB2 block? Not really that many. And, and, and uh, oh, sorry, sir, you, you have good experience with it? Did you raise a hand? Yes? Okay, nice. I tried it uh, maybe 30 times or something like that and uh, didn't really uh, uh, get the good response that I was hoping for because it is a nice block to perform. You can do that when the patient is intubated, lying uh, in the supine position. And you can use, as you can see here, you can use a linear uh, uh, transducer. So I think one of the, th the, the things that we should really ask Raf about is to where do we put the tip of the needle? Where do we put the tip of the needle? Because I, I'm struggling still to find out exactly where do we do that. So going back to the tequila block, sorry about making this detour, but I, I thought it would be nice to talk a little bit about the nomenclature also about the quadratus lumborum blocks. 
The cradotus lumborum muscle is, a, uh, is not a complex muscle at all. I actually forgot completely that it existed until I, I read the um, uh, Raffa's uh, 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 letter to the editor, no, letter to El Sora. The cradotus lumborum muscle attaches here to the uh, iliac crest. It, it, very importantly for the ultrasound guidance, it also attaches to the apices of the uh, transverse processes of L1, L2, L3, L4. And also, it attaches to the lower border of the 12th rib. So actually, please pay, pay notice already here, this muscle tracks into the thoracic cage. We, we can see that straight away. It's the same with its partner, partner in crime, the, the, the psoas muscle. The psoas muscle also attaches at T12. So this muscle also tracks into the thoracic cage. And if you can, if you bear with me, there's a sort of a pocket between these two muscles that you see here. So what if we inject it from the posterior side, going straight through the caudatus lumbar muscle and inject it local anesthetic into this pocket, just for the fun of it, just for the fun of it. What would happen then? Well, I asked Professor Bernard Morickel from, from Innsbruck, who has been tremendously helpful, and without him I wouldn't be able to explain at all how we believe that the tequila block works. He said, well, he speaks in this f funny German accent, a Dummkopf, natürlich weißt du, du wissen doch, that the local anesthetic that you inject here in this pocket, uh, this, these two muscles are covered by the transversalis fascia. And the, the diaphragm uh, creates some crura just over the, the cranial uh, uh, parts of these two muscles, the, the lateral and medial arcuate ligaments. So he said, it's obvious that if you inject local anesthetic here, it can only track carefully. Behind the transversalis fascia, posterior to the lateral and medial arcuate ligament and the splanchnic nerves openings, and up into the, the area where we really want to go, to the thoracic pervertible space. So, again, the transmuscular quadratus lumborum block, no one can really say that, and TQL, you cannot remember, but tequila. I've seen how, the amount of scotch you, you were drinking last night, so I, I'm, I'm hoping that alcohol will get you to use this block. So what we're actually doing is, if you look at this drawing, this actual drawing of the anatomy, we're putting the needle through penetrating the quadratus lumborum muscle, injecting local anesthetic here between the quadratus lumborum and the psoas major muscle. And in this drawing you can see that you have the transversalis fascia here. So the local anesthetic stays contained. It cannot go any further down at the, than at the level of the iliac crest because the transversalis fascia also attaches to that. So it can only track cephalid. And as you know that these muscles in the, in the living patients, they always have a sort of a tension going on, rhythmic contractions in the muscles, and at the same time with the respiratory movements, we are creating a negative pressure in the thoracic cage. So I believe, or we believe, that that local anesthetic deposited between the two muscles in this pocket or in this plane will track cephalate, sorry, and enter into the thoracic pervertible space. So that is it. Inject into the pocket and it goes up. At the level of the diaphragm, this, this is, uh, most of you are probably uh, familiar with the uh, 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 Visible Human Project uh, where this is, this is actually, a, uh, no, he's not alive now, but uh, he, he used to be a convict, and he was sentenced to his death, uh, death in the United States and executed. And he sold his body to a university, and they, with a, you know, I'll, I'll not go into it too much, but he, they created a program of anatomy, very, very detailed anatomy for this particular person, where you can actually uh, commercially buy that uh, and, and use it to create very nice, sagittal, axial, and, uh, and uh, coronal images of, of the body. This is just at the level of the 
12th rep. It, it's a sagittal uh, image. So you can see here depicted in green that the uh, quadratus lumborum muscle attaches to the 12th rib. You also see the big psoas muscle. Uh, you can't see that it attaches further medial uh, in here at the, the level of the 12th uh, um, uh, vertebral body. Uh, but if you look at the blue uh, uh, diaphragmatic structure here, you see that the diaphragm creates a funnel. So if you have injected local anesthetic between the two muscles, that local anesthetic can use this opening and enter into the thoracic perivertebral space. Now, were we the first to think about that? Not at all. Saito, in, in, in 1999 at the time, uh, um, described also exactly the same uh, pathway for local anesthetic from the thoracic cage and into the lumbar area. Again, depicting the medial arcuate ligaments and the lateral arcuate ligaments. Uh, so that was once again Professor Marigel say, Domkov, uh, idiot. Uh, of course, everyone knows about this publication. So uh, I said, yes, of course. I just temporarily forgot about it. But also, uh, another good friend of us, uh, uh, Manos Karmaka, already in uh, 2001, uh, having placed catheters in a patient, uh, sorry, catheters in the thoracic pervertible area, uh, uh, injected uh, uh, contrast enhanced uh, local anesthetic in, through this catheter, and he saw that that local could track from the, from the thoracic uh, area and down into the uh, lumbar area posterior to the arcuate ligaments. And why are we so interested in this thoracic pervertebral area? Because that is where the, 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 all the gold is, is, is placed if you are interested in providing analgesia, anesthesia to the abdominal and retroperitoneal area. So in this triangular area, I've borrowed this, everyone is borrowing this image of the thoracic pervertebral space, you find the ventral rami, the communicating rami to the sympathetic trunk. And this is actually where we uh, want to have our local anesthetic end up. And the funny thing about anatomy is that everything adds up. Because you remember from previous slides that our local anesthetic was positioned posterior to the transversalis fascia, covering the quadratus lumborum uh, and the source major muscles. Now, uh, um, the good Lord has made it so convenient that that transversalis fascia is actually continuous with the endothoracic fascia. Continuous with the endothoracic fascia. So if in the lumbar area, that local anesthetic was behind the transversalis fascia, it tracks posterior also for, to the endothoracic fascia. So that local anesthetic should, in theory, accumulate in the thoracic perivertebral space. And already now, I can, I remember a, public, a very recent publication by uh, Dr. Shanti and, and Professor Kamaka saying, not talking about, I'm very happy to say, not talking about uh, the tequila block, but talking about the PEX block. Do we really need another uh, block for breast surgery? No, and, and, and other people are saying to me, Jens, I mean, if, if we have the thoracic pervertebral space, why not just inject directly into this thoracic pervertebral space? And they're right, of course, they're right. It is, however, uh, a fact, uh, a very well documented uh, and published fact that local anesthetic injected with some pressure into this area will in many cases track more medially through the epidural uh, sleeve and into the epidural space. I think uh, our good friend Michael Barrington uh, from Australia in 2010 in a uh, cadaveric study uh, uh, looking at the uh, either single shot or multiple injection uh, shots for, um, for a, a thoracic pervertebral block found uh, as high as uh, an incidence of uh, uh, local anesthetic spread into the epidural area as high as 70%. Other 
other publications have reported 30 or 50 percent. Does that really matter whether any of our local tracks into the epidural space? M maybe not. But it is also a fact that if you submit papers, manuscripts for, to the, the good uh, uh, journals and ask them to publish it, and if you have a, an incidence of, of 70, 80 percent of epidural spread, they will probably tell you that it is an interesting find, but uh, we don't really want to publish that because it's too dangerous for the patients. I don't know what you think about that. It's just uh, something to, to consider. So for the tequila block, one disadvantage is that you have to place the patient either in the lateral decubitus or in the sitting position. The sitting position I will come back with later. So what we do uh, at our hospital where we uh, we anesthetize, uh, uh, it's a cancer hospital, so we um, anesthetize a lot of patients undergoing uh, lab uh, hemicolectomy, um, uh, all sorts of nephrectomies, open and laparoscopic, a lot of gynecologies, uh, gynecologic surgeries, obstetric surgeries, plastic surgeries, so on and so forth. So we place around uh, seven, sorry, 95 percent of our blocks in the awake patients prior to surgery in the block room. That requires a bit of logistics and I do know that your system, how to run uh, 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 an operating theater is, is different from the way we do in Scandinavia because we have these nurse anesthetists or anesthetic nurses, Ian, what is it, correct word? Uh, anyway, you know what I mean, Th these nurses are specially trained so one uh, anesthesiologist will then um, like me, for instance, I will normally have free theaters to, to, uh, to cater for, and I would have anesthetic nurses in each of these theaters. So I have ample time to call down uh, my next patient, place the blocks prior to surgery under full surveillance, and then ensure, or uh, at least convince myself that the blocks, blocks have been correctly placed, and they are then ready for surgery the moment the, the cleaning people are finished with the theaters. So, but it is a disadvantage by, some will say, that you have to place the patient in the lateral position. You use also a curvilinear transducer, which for some uh, makes this uh, a bit awkward. You then put the needle very close to the lateral border of the, the transducer. You put it through the, the, uh, the uh, cordosus lumborum muscle and you inject in this facial plane between the two muscles, not inside the psoas muscle because you then risk that local anesthetic tracks down and performs uh, instead a, a blockage of the, uh, um, the lumbar plexus and that is certainly not what we're interested in. So we, after we have placed the blocks, we transport the patients in the bed just outside the theater and when the theater is ready, the patient themselves walks in. So we make sure that they do not have any lower extremity weakness. We have seen that, uh, I think, one in 200, uh, one in 200 cases, that uh, sometimes they are a bit of a motor weakness. Uh, our theory is that some of that local injected here can actually track down alongside the, the transverse process and then affect, in some way, the, the, uh, uh, the lumbar plexus within the, the psoas muscle. What you see in this picture is the, uh, the uh, anterior side of the of the uh, vertebral body L4, the transverse process, the quadratus lumborum muscle attaching to the apex of the transverse process, the big psoas muscle in the front and the erector spina muscle in the back. This is also by some called the shamrock sign. The, the shamrock is a, a small uh, iris clover. So these three muscles are the, the leaves of the clover and this uh, transverse process is the stem of the clover. However, I like, like Amit Pava was saying me, to, uh, I discovered this uh, uh, expression of this is actually the finger of God pointing towards the quadratus lumborum muscle saying, do remember this muscle, it's very important. Apparently, and I was quite drunk at the time in Glasgow at an ESFRA meeting, I was sitting and is trying to explain to Amit, look at this Amit, it's, it's pretty smart, isn't it? The finger of God. So he got a little tired of that, but he rem remembered it. So. Very embarrassing. So this is again from the Visual Human Project. You see that there is, at the level of L4, 
a nice, a nice uh, division here between the caudatus lumboa muscle and the psoas muscle. Here you see the transverse abdominus muscle, the external and the internal oblique. And much different to what actually uh, Rafa shows, there's, there's actually no, at this level of L4, just above the iliac crest, there's actually no lat dorsi muscle. There's no lat dorsi muscle here. But there is a clear uh, plane between the two muscles, the sores major, the gratis lumborum, and both of these muscles are covered by the transversalis fascia. So if you inject here, uh, you are in the correct place. Do not inject deep inside the psoas muscle because then you will have, here you see the femoral nerve, and here at this level you will see the spinal nerve L3 coming down through the muscle in the posterior part of the psoas muscle. This is femoral nerve. So you have to inject inside the, uh, uh, the plane between the two muscles. Since we are placing a lot of bilateral blocks, we find it uh, uh, very convenient in the block room just to say to the patient, please sit up. And instead of using the lateral position, we use the top tequila block. The top tequila block means not that you are having another or you are topping up your, 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 your tequila, but that you, instead of being here at the level of uh, L4, you track that uh, transducer more and more medially until you see uh, the, the, the vertebral body and the psoas muscle in another way. Here you have the transverse, transverse process, the psoas muscle deep here. Now, because we are at the level of L2, we clearly see the kidney depicted. And you have now another shape of the caudatus lumbar muscle, more, more uh, square in form, and, but you still, of course, have the erector spina muscle in the back. And you can come from either the lateral side or the medial side, and once again inject in the fascial plane between the caudatus lumbar and psoas muscle. Whether this block is better because it's closer to the Jurassic pervertal space, we do not know. Uh, but we use it increasingly for the bilateral blocks because once you've blocked the patient here, you just move to the contralateral side and you do the same procedure again. And people have often said to me, well, Jens, the kidney is very close now, very, very close. But I say to them, yes, but we, we are inserting the needles under the guidance of ultrasound. So if you make sure that you can see your needle at all time, you will not uh, uh, inject into the kidney. So in my view, it doesn't matter that you can actually see the kidney or see the pleura or whatever, because when you see the structure, you can avoid damaging it. So maybe this will come in handy for some of you if you're doing bilateral blocks. Again, from the visible human project at the level of L2, you see that the two muscles here are very much closer, but it is still very easy to, uh, once you inject, and I always use the first injections with, is with a little bit of saline, and as soon as you see the two muscles separating a little bit, like with the tap block, you just change the syringe and, and deliver your local. We published this in, in, in anesthesia uh, in a letter to the editor. As you can see, it's, it's the same images. In this case, it was a very uh, slim young lady. She had had a percutaneous nephrolytotomy, and she had several drains in that area, and she, had, she was suffering from, from uh, acute pain because uh, she had, had no uh, preoperative block. So we were unable to, to deliver the, the, the classic block here, so we just move more medially and, and, and place the blocks like in the top tequila position, and it worked very well. So all of what he's talking about, this little guy from Copenhagen, can it really be substantiated? Well, we just published, one of my PhD students, Medidam, uh, uh, just published in, in Anesthesia and Anesthesia. It's not on paper yet, but you can see the, the, the whole publication and our results from a, a big cadaveric study. It's out on the ahead of print or early, early print or something like that on, 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 on the website of uh, um, Anesthesia and Anesthesia. So I invite you to read this paper. Uh, some of the results from, from, uh, from uh, uh, this cadaveric study performed again with the help of Professor Marigl in Innsbruck 
we showed clearly that the local anesthetic here in green, uh, injected in the lumbar area, tracks cephalid, reaches the diaphragm here indicated with this purple line, and that it tracks uh, cephalid into the thoracic cage and, and beyond. In the thoracic cage, it, 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 here it's, it's depicted where was the openings for, for the various blocks. It was the lateral awkward ligament, medial, both awkward ligaments, or it could also be the splanchnic nerves openings. And in this uh, particular, uh, in this particular uh, uh, paper, or in this uh, uh, cadaveric study, we found that the injectate with the higher viscosity than, 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 uh, uh, than local anesthetic, uh, we found tracking to the ventral rami of T9, T10, and T11, T12. And below the diaphragm, the subcostal nerve, the ileohypogastroinguinal, genitofemoral, uh, lateral femoral cutaneous nerve, was affected in a various degrees, but never, never the femoral nerve. And this, all, for all of these, all of these uh, uh, cadavers, uh, following the injections, we opened up, uh, or rather Professor Morigan and his assistant opened up the psoas muscle to uh, localize the, the femoral nerve that you see here embedded within the psoas compartment, and it was never stained. So uh, basically, these are the two blocks that we uh, sort of put forward to you and, 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 and ask you to consider whether this could be part of your regional anesthesia armamentarium. Here, once again, the, 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 uh, uh, the classic, so to speak, te tequila block, uh, and down here, the top tequila block. Uh, I'm coming back to this bit about the pararenal fat compartment. It is as you well know, there has been a couple of publications saying, well, they do not find the same spread of local anesthetic or injectate in their cadaveric studies uh, following uh, a tequila block. My good friend, uh, Professor Jin, has also uh, published some uh, negative results. I'm happy to say that with their tequila blocks, they did not find any uh, uh, staining of the femoral nerve either, but they did not find any. They could not document any cephalid spread further than the diaphragm. But I'm not saying that they did anything wrong, uh, but it is very tempting for many people when they pass through the caudatus lumborum muscle that they could sort of include this black pararenal fat compartment as being part of the caudatus lumborum muscle. And not by choice, but uh, by accident injecting in this area. And in that case, of course, you would not find any spread uh, cephalid into the uh, thoracic pervertebral space because you would be in the pararenal fat compartment. And that, that does not track further than the diaphragm. Once again, the whole procedure, lateral decubitus, insert the needle, inject local anesthetic between the two muscles, the QL muscle, psoas muscle, not out here in the pararenal fat compartment. This is a coronal image of a, a, a young registrar that uh, gave his body uh, to me for a, a, some, a few days. <laughs> and um, as you can see, we injected here lidocaine with some constant enhanced uh, 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 radiology stuff. Uh, so you can see that the, that local, it's, you see it best on the, on the left side here, that the local stops at the level of the iliac crest because it cannot track further down. And then it spreads carefully to reach the diaphragm and beyond into the thoracic pervertebral space. And here you have the actual image. This is taken four hours after injection. And as you can see, none of that local tracks into the tap. It stains contained between the quadratus lumborum muscle and the psoas muscle. And it, from this position, it just tracks up and moves into the thoracic pervertebral area. Yes, and uh, we also published this in an anesthesia analgesia case report. Uh, again, this pararenal fat compartment out here. If you, if you uh, ask your patient, sorry, if you ask your patients to take a, a deep breath or a couple of deep breaths, you will so in, in many cases see that, that the kidneys present themselves exactly in very close or in this pararenal fat compartment. And so we consider it is 
not good to advance the needle from the anterior side into, the, into this space between the quadratus lumbar muscle and the psoas muscle. But we advise to you to go from the posterior uh, side to inject in the facial plane in order to not accidentally to, to, uh, to damage the kidney. So now to the when, where, why, and how. We find that this tequila block in its two forms is indicated for any kind of abdominal and or retroperitoneal surgery. It should always be administered between the QL and the, sorry, the QL muscle and the source major muscle. Why does it work? Well, it spreads to the thoracic pervertible space. The good thing about it is that we found that it, we find, sorry, that it alleviates uh, visceral pain as well as so much sensory pain. And it also have a very long lasting effect, normally about 18 to 24 hours. The tap blocks, the various tap blo ultrasound guided tap blocks in the anterior abdominal wall normally last no longer than, than 12 hours if you use plain buby or plain robivacin. As more or less of a, a, a standard thing now, we use dexmethasone, four milligram on each side, and that prolongs the block to around 36 hours. You can also use dexmethotomidin, and in that case we deliver we mix the local with 100 mics of dexmethotomidin on each side, so 200 mics in, in all. And that is, that is tolerable for the patient without sedating them too much. And how to do it? Well, obviously, I, I will advocate the, the tequila way. So just finishing off with a, a, probably this is a, not a very good image, but this is a re very recent image here from March. A young man, a young male, uh, undergoing uh, removal of his, uh, his uh, testicles due to cancer. And uh, this obviously for a 21-year-old man is, is you know, a bit of a trauma, and he was very, very afraid of uh, having any sort of anesthesia. So what, what uh, general or spinal anesthesia. So what we suggested to him was, let's try out the bilateral tequila block, and he being a young man, he liked the word tequila, so he said, why not, let's go for that. So we, uh, we gave him that, and uh, one milligram of midazolam, and he had his testicles removed in, in a wake surgical anesthesia. So that was quite successful. So thank you very much, and if there's time for any questions, I'll be glad to answer them.